The return of Jujutsu Kaisen. It's been a really long time. I think about a year, actually. All right, we're going to exercise you for eating the finger of uh, Ryomen. Well, you can't tell by the VAs. <laughs> oh, this guy. This is the guy we saw in the intro scene, right? The guy who was sentencing him to death. Seems a lot more amicable now. We know where it is. <laughs> the stunned silence. Is he wearing a blindfold? Abs. Shonen protagonist abs check. Damn, look at them abs. Super athlete indeed. Hold my bags. Is this an advertisement? Is this how they pay for this amazing animation? He's very casual about this whole thing. Very confident. Wow. I guess the guy backs up the talk. <laughs> Damn. And that's saying a whole lot, considering the fact that even before his cursed finger demon acquisition, he was the fastest man alive. Is it like some extra sensory thing? So this has been going on a long time. I'm yeah, pretty sure school will be cancelled. So he's not aware when Ryoman takes over. I don't know if I'd call that control. He can switch places. Right, and this is the first scene. So much for that. Right. This could be a test, though. This guy had 20 fingers. Oh, it's like a decay type thing. That's interesting. Oh my god, that's insane. They're gonna feed him all 20 fingers. It's gonna keep escalating. <laughs> There's the quest. Gee, let me think that one over for a bit. I remember my favorite part of the opening. Wait for it. Wait for it. Shigaraki's here. And there it is! The panda! Vault in the roof. That's why we're all here. And just like that, we have our quest. And also a, an amazing potential for power scaling. I could even see this fight being foreshadowing in a way where, like, we've established how powerful this guy is and how that might start to change as we eat more of these demon fingers. One thing I'm wondering about after rewatching the first episode and seeing that intro is the connection to the themes of death. You know, the show starts with his grandfather's death, which instills him with the motivation to rush into the school to help his friends. In the process, reflecting on his fears of death and also stating that he wants to ensure that people have proper deaths. And now we have the fact that he basically is living with a death sentence or so it appears, and is also eating a corpse. I'm not exactly sure what to make of all that put together yet, but something to keep in mind. But gone are the lackadaisical school days of occult clubbing and breaking Japan's national sports records. Episode 2, for myself. Nah, I had no way of knowing. You did unwrap a sarcophagus finger, but no one could have expected this. Oh, they don't even realize. They don't even know his role. Right. Uh, he didn't know either. He doesn't explain. Either he's protecting, protecting himself, or it's very humble. This is no joke what he did. One of the worst outcomes. I mean, give me the path where I have a chance. The grandfather was around in the show for all of like two minutes, but he's definitely going to be part of the show for its duration, considering his last request to his grandson was that he help other people, even if he doesn't do it perfectly, which is interesting. Down the hatch. Imagine if you had to chew it. This one didn't go down as easy. Maybe there's some danger for this character as well, you know, like, there's obviously a huge trade-off. Is this what Grandfather would've wanted? <laughs> I also like how we didn't explore any option C's. It was just, yeah, alright, I'll eat these fingers. What is that line? When you have nothing else to lose, you're free to do anything? Very well-funded religious school. It's pretty hard to fathom just how much his life has changed in the past 
what, 24 hours? Losing what seems like his only family member, becoming aware of the supernatural, becoming the supernatural himself, leaving his school and his friends. Although it seems like he doesn't really have a lot of close connections and I'm wondering why that is. Why does he keep his distance from people? Is there some like abandonment thing there maybe? Or has he just lived very transiently, joining this jujutsu cult and having to come to terms with his own death. Yet he seems sort of okay with it. Like he's handling it very well. Is it just that he's super chill or is there something else bubbling beneath the surface? You know, there's a weird perspective thing that can happen there where like if there are things that are really difficult or you have a very heightened awareness of, of one particular problem and it's sort of all consuming, other challenges that might otherwise be a lot harder to tackle seem less significant. Like if I'm really going through something, other forms of normal anxiety just melt away. It's like I have a weird sort of confidence, which maybe just comes from not having enough resources to deal with the small and inconsequential in light of all that I'm struggling with a bigger problem. There's a silver lining in that though or a way that can be repurposed in a really powerful way where you can make yourself really courageous and strong by learning how to be afraid of the right things you know if somebody can align their greatest fears with the things that are actually the greatest threats to them and the most detrimental with a high degree of, of accuracy and understanding doing the right thing and being courageous having the strength to fight for the things that you you believe in becomes a little easier i don't know exactly what's the case with uh itadori but i just get the gut sense that although some of this might just be natural character and who he is. It's hard to imagine him coping with this without something bigger lurking underneath that is more dominant, whatever that might be. I'm sure the principal will be a character. <laughs> yeah, no pressure. When school actually matters for once. <laughs> Where have heard this before? All that matters is strength, power. Yeah, definitely Migi Parasite vibes. Yeah, I'm waiting on the backstory on Ryomen Sukuna. I feel like his character is going to be important in terms of who he was at that time. That makes sense, since typically for this to work and to evoke any kind of emotion, it has to be tied to something human, or at the very least, something real and natural. Similar to Demon Slayer, where on the surface they're, you know, they're monsters converted by someone, but they were demons before they were demons, if that makes sense. They're corrupted human beings. Right, that's what I'm saying. I feel like they're gonna fight again. This is being set up, isn't it? The confidence, though. Is he sewing? I feel like they're almost definitely not just dolls. <laughs> Wait, for real? The, that Jennifer Lawrence? That wasn't a localization. He says Jennifer Lawrence. <laughs> Very specific. Imagine you're Jennifer Lawrence and you just decide to watch an anime one day. You hear about this new hot anime called Jujutsu Kaisen. <laughs> Give it a try and you realize that you're the main character's type. What an honor. <laughs> Can we just appreciate the fact that his leading interview introduction was his type in women? As if that's a credential, you know? <laughs> We're just crushing this interview, aren't we? Favorite woman, Jennifer Lawrence. Here to learn jujitsu. Obviously, you use your powers to win the heart of Jennifer Lawrence. <laughs> Great answer. I'm glad that nothing is at stake in this interview, like, you know, your life. Oh, that's a good thing that nothing's at stake, like, in life. Yeah, I knew they weren't just dolls. But this is a test. This is the real interview. It starts now. Fight my toys. Right. Yeah, I mean, it could be both at once. It's a request that meant a lot to him, so it's him. He's not going to be all the way there yet. He, he just found out about this yesterday. You can't expect someone to be fully committed to their endeavors because you don't even know what your endeavors are until you're really deep into doing them. He's just following the cues that he has and it starts telling him this is the right direction and it probably is. And also, I think there's something of a, a trap that's really common in the idea that if you're not constantly in a state of anguish about the world's problems and aren't doing everything you can to help, then you're somehow responsible for it or that you're, you're guilty in a way. Even though that kind of guilt is relatable, there's a lot of things wrong with it. First of all, nobody is responsible responsible for the existence of tragedy, you know, it's just baked into reality. Perspective is important and you don't want to shy away from the truth, but being removed from terrible things is actually great. It's a gift. It's not something you feel bad about. And you also don't want to shy away from responsibility and you don't want to shy away from doing good things, but there's a limit to what you can do. And the way that you help is by doing the things you're best at doing and that are within your reach so that you could do them well and competently in a way that's actually useful. And you sort of got to pick because to do anything good means specializing in it most likely. So what does world famine have to do with 
with him exactly. In the last 24 hours, he's gone so far down the path of fighting curses to suggest that there's some other priority he should have is sort of ridiculous. And just on top of it all, the guilt does nothing. You can sit around feeling guilty your entire life and suffering for that, but unless it's connected to some correlated action, it's just making your life worse and making you miss the, the beauty of the things in your own hands without actually doing anything about the things you feel guilty about. <laughs> Unnecessary. Didn't need that. Yeah, here we go. Facing death again. This keeps coming up. <laughs> Man, that doesn't summarize a lot of things. Highly motivated and a little bit crazy. Or a lot of crazy as the case may be. Oh, what? Oh, what? Interesting. Yeah, I sort of get what he's getting at, though. This is no joke. And he's been very casual. Yeah, this has been his awakening, these first two episodes. Exactly, yeah. Right, right. I feel like it's the kind of thing where if you can see it, you know, if you can see it, then you gotta do it. He was saying that about other people. He doesn't want other people to regret the way they die. Now he's saying it for himself. Less than complete. Yeah, but he had passed the moment he walked in the door, probably. This is all learning experience, not really an interview. <laughs> is that? Uh, it's a girl like Jennifer Lawrence, I guess. Let's be real, that's why he's admitted. So how quickly does he eat the six we already have, or the five remaining ones we already have? Ooh, there's a trade-off. The closer he gets to this, success, the more powerful Sukuna gets. That was, that was a lot. That was very extreme. We're gonna start building the crew now, which is gonna be a lot of fun. Better be the panda. I've been waiting so long. I've been waiting a year. Over a year to see this panda. But just going by conventions, I'm guessing it's gonna be a female character. Yep. Oh, this is the ending. First time watching. Very... Oh, look at him go! Damn! What can this guy do? He can shot put, he can run, jump through second or third story windows, and now he can dance. Look at him go! <laughs> this is nice, I like this. It's got some Persona vibes. <laughs> this is... This is great. Very interesting vibe. It's so lighthearted and fun. I like how it's a fashion show. My cat likes it too, apparently. <laughs> you heard there was soul in the room. There he is! Or she, the panda. Damn, that was fun. That was a fun ending. I like it. So that was episode two, and while the first episode sort of defined the world we live in, some of the main characters' motivations, I feel like now we've established the plot, or the synopsis. And we've got the threat also. We've got the risk. And it's not death, although it seems like death will be a major theme. The threat is him and his character, and whether or not he's convicted enough, and can understand what's going on enough, and have it mean enough to him, to stomach the ever-increasing amount of darkness he's going to have to embody.